tremendously important subject today. The topic that we're going to look at from the Bible is called, You Can Change. You Can Change. There was a, a phrase that was given to me a long time ago that stuck in my spirit, and uh, it's helped me uh, through all so many years. And it goes like this. God loves us just the way we are. But God loves us too much to let us stay just the way we are. Now, whether we realize it or not, there's something inside of us that needs to change. The Bible talks about us being born in sin in the sense that we have a, a sinful nature that opposes God, doesn't want to submit to God. Uh, another word for it is called the flesh. It's that something inside of us that's broken or that's twisted and God recognizes that. He's made provision. He's given us help for that. But he demands change from us. To have a relationship with God requires change. Now, we're better at small changes in our life than we are at deep change. If I have a sleeping habit that I would really work at, I can change it. If I have an eating habit that I don't like, I can change it. If I throw my clothes on the floor instead of picking them up, well, my wife will see that I change it. So there's things we can change, but when it comes to deep change, it is only God that can initiate the process where he tells us that we must be born again. That's something we can't do ourselves, but God does. And once we are believers in Jesus, the expression is saved, then life becomes a process of continuing to change to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> One day the disciples were talking to Jesus and they had been arguing. You know, they were uh, fleshly in many ways. You know, they were still uh, led by their sinful nature, just like many of us are still led. <clears throat> so they were arguing and they were talking about who would be the greatest among them. And Jesus taught them a lesson that they would never forget about change. Let's take a look at that from Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5. <clears throat> at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? <clears throat> and he called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. What powerful words Jesus gives us here. And <clears throat> What he's, trying to, what he's trying to convey to us, what we need to gather from this portion of Scripture, is learn how to change from children. Now, I read a book one time called uh, Reverse Mentoring, and it was uh, fascinating because everybody agrees that mentoring is a good thing. In this age of technology, I found that that book, Reverse Mentoring, really helped me because any time that I am stuck with something technological, which is often, I reach out to people who are younger than me. I never uh, connect with people older than me about uh, tech problems. And especially our youth, there's one uh, young person in particular that has helped me out so much with my cell phone and uh, computer. Reverse mentoring. Do you know that Jesus is showing the disciples something about change, and he's holding up a little child, saying, you can learn from this child. Now, many of you are, who are listening are either parents or you're uh, teaching children. And I have to say that uh, this is a very responsible calling, a very noble calling, something that is uh, great in the eyes of God. And the Lord will one day uh, hold us accountable for our uh, mentoring, for our, uh, 
you're teaching these children. But it is a great honor, and we can learn from them while we're doing the teaching to them. We learn from them. And so the question naturally arises, what can children teach us about change? Well, change is about trust. And children are good at trusting. They're so much better than adults because they don't have all the baggage and they don't have all the bad experiences. In our home, we're blessed to have um, a young boy, eight years old, and his mom, they're staying in my, my daughter's room as she was married almost a couple years ago now. And so Elijah and I will often uh, go out for walks around the community or maybe up to the park. Uh, and one thing that I told him at the very beginning of our walks, uh, I said, Elijah, it's fine that you can you know, run up and down the sidewalk and go a little bit ahead of me. And, you know, not too far, though. But when we get to an intersection, I want you right beside me. And when I say, Elijah, you better stop. Then I want you to stop. When I say, Elijah, you follow me. Go with me. I want you right beside me. Is that all clear? He said, yes. Because he trusts. And trust is not something that we grow out of. It's not something that's just childish. God wants us to trust. In fact, we must trust God. Even to enter into a relationship with God. The Bible talks about faith being the, the doorway to God's grace. We have to have faith in Him. We must trust that God really does love us. But how do we know that? Well, we know that from you know, reading the scriptures and seeing all that God has done for us. The Lord God is the greatest parent that we can ever imagine. He is a good, good father. And in his fathering us, he knows exactly what we need. Uh, he's never an abusive father, but neither is he a permissive father. He's the father of our souls that knows everything and is working everything together for our good because we've been called by him. But we have to trust him even when it doesn't seem like things are working out for good. The scriptures tell us, and this is a scripture you need to carve in stone, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. The biggest hindrance so often in our relationship with God and trusting God is our own understanding. We think we know more than God. But when we surrender, when we say, Lord, I'm going to trust you with this, then we have that peace that comes from his presence. Trust can be learned from children. We have to trust God that he can both save us and keep us. The scriptures say in Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So it's faith, it's entrusting ourselves to God that gets us into relationship with God. And it's that same trust that keeps us walking with God and learning from God and being able to understand more and more about Him. So thank you, children, for teaching us about trust. Learn to change from children. Change is also about humility. Jesus, when his little child was brought into their midst and the disciples had been arguing about who would be the greatest, Jesus said these words. He said, therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I wonder if the disciples, when they were hearing Jesus say this, their mouths opened and said, what? How can that be? How can this little one be great in God's kingdom when she hasn't even done anything? She hasn't performed any great deeds or miracles. But Jesus said that we have to be like this. We have to humble ourselves. And most children see their need of humility and being teachable. Now, not always. We know they can be very stubborn. But 
When you teach a child, for example, in, in the preschool program, uh, you don't usually have a child look back at you and say, you can stop teaching that, I know all about it. No, they're, they're, they're listening, and oftentimes their eyes are fixed on you because this might be the very first time they're ever hearing this, this imprint that you're putting into their soul. Humility opens us up to be teachable. And the Bible clearly tells us that God requires us to be humble. In fact, you see in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, there are things mentioned, seven things mentioned that God hates. And the very first thing that he says is a proud look. And God hates pride so much because God is a God of truth and pride is a lie. And pride separates us from God. It makes us deceive, thinking we don't need him, and he's irrelevant to my life. God hates pride. But when we humble ourselves, we have open eyes and open ears for what God wants to teach us. There's a scripture from the book of James, which I go to so often when it comes to the subject of pride and humility. Listen to these amazing words. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4, verse 6 and verse 10. So I have encouraged uh, many people in witnessing uh, to others about Christ, is that instead of living your life out here without God's blessing, without God's protection, why don't you humble yourself and come under the mighty hand of God? That he might bless you, he might lift you up. It's the best place in the world to be, it's in his presence and under his hand. But it takes humility. You can't just pretend that you're, you're good at life and you can do it all. You don't need God. You have to want him. I did not give God a chance in my life until I was 17 years old. And uh, I had opportunities uh, growing up to surrender fully to God, but I remember, especially at the ages of 13 and 14, I remember thinking to myself, what will the other people at school think of me? And so this, this pride inside of how I would look and appear to others kept me back until I was 17 and I just prayed and I didn't care what other people thought. And I gave myself to Jesus. I humbled myself before him. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me. And when I look back now at my, uh, you know, those teenage years, 13, 14, 15, and how I was so worried about what other people were thinking of me, now, later in life, I look back and I realize they weren't thinking of me at all. They were just thinking about themselves, like I was thinking about myself. So, it doesn't make sense. We need to humble ourselves before the Lord. Now, if we're going to change, we need to learn to change from children. And let me give you a last point that we find here in uh, the scriptures. That change is about relationships. Other people influence us. And children change through relationships. Now, have you ever noticed uh, in babies where if there's a baby that is uh, crying in a room and another baby is brought into the room, how oftentimes that baby that's brought into the room will start crying too. It's just that, that influence. Uh, you want to call it peer pressure, call it whatever you want to, but it's real. And children uh, pick up and they learn and they change through their environment. That's why parenting is such a amazing uh, responsibility. It's such a, a great blessing and honor. But we have to be careful as well. I remember one time years ago I had a, a family come in uh, to the office for family counseling and uh, they were just saying the family's in dis disintegrating and there's all this chaos at home and as I observed how they talked to each other and uh, how they lived, I, I picked up on something. Not only was the husband doing some things that were detrimental, but 
The wife had this habit of when her husband said something, she would often say, yeah, right. And it was really disrespectful in the sense that it was saying, I don't really care what you think. You don't really know anything anyway. And they had a daughter. The daughter probably was about 10. And I remember watching uh, one time when the daughter was with the father, and the father told her to, to do something because she was doing something wrong. And she just looked at him and she said, yeah, right. And I thought, wow, this little girl is mirroring her mother. She's just reflecting the same attitude that her mother has, but she's reflecting it to her father. So I say that because change it happens in relationships. Now, another example is for us as adults. We change by relationships. If you go into a room and everybody in that room is uh, enjoying each other's company, they're smiling, uh, there's some laughter, then it kind of lifts your spirit. It's like you kind of feel that. On the other hand, if you go into the room and uh, people are, are tense and they don't like each other and there's all this stress, it's like you've walked into a freezer. You know, that, that spiritual temperature just kind of pulls you, tries to pull you down. So relationships uh, change us. We have to be very careful. We can't necessarily choose who we work with. And so we can't even choose uh, family members as far as extended family. But we can choose who influences our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, He who walks with the wise grows wise but a companion of fools suffers harm. And again, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character. So if you're willing to change for the better, then get in good company. And the best company that you can keep ever is walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Just cultivating the presence of God in your life. Now let me end with this little picture. Let's say that I had a friend that I hadn't seen in a long time. Let's say I was single and living by myself in, in a, a rented place. And my friend called me, I hadn't seen him in years, and he said to me, Mark, hey, I'd love to come over. But I knew that where I lived was a disaster. I mean, I had food in the refrigerator that was months old. I hadn't washed floors, vacuumed, and dishes piled up. And it was just, everything was in disarray. So I told, I would tell my friends, you know what, I'm really sorry. It's not going to work out. I just, you know, don't want you coming by. But what if my friend said this? He said, Mark, you know, I I'm here to help you. I really, I would love to see you again. In fact, I have a time off for about two weeks. I would be willing to come to where you are and help you clean your whole house. I won't judge. I won't say, well, how come that's so dirty? I'll just come in and I want to bless you. That's a great friend. You know, that's what Jesus does for us. Sometimes we don't allow Jesus in our life because we feel like we're too dirty. Oh, Jesus, you wouldn't want to come into my life. I have these secret rooms that are so filthy. But Jesus is willing to come in, and he's willing to help you clean. In fact, he gives you the power to clean. Listen to what this, the word says. My last verse I want to share with you. Jesus said, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. So Jesus is saying, I want to come on in. I'll come in, and I'm not going to come in to judge you, but I'm going to come in to help you so that you can change, that you can be a blessed person. And may... This message reminds us that every time we look into the face of a child, there's something about the Lord that can 
help us learn something about changing our own life. God bless you. Thank you. I believe that in eternity, there's going to be people from every tribe, every tongue, and every language. I believe that heaven is going to be full of people who've been transformed by the Spirit of God. I, I like to say it this way. God wants to transform us down here before we get up there. And if you're watching, I want you to allow the presence and Spirit of God to invade your heart at this moment of asking Jesus to come in and say, Lord, I want your throne to come into my life and allow my heart to be the place where you dwell. Come on and say this with me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Lord, I believe that you died on a cross and that you rose in three days. So change me. Make me brand new. I want to be where you are. I make the decision to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time or you rededicated your heart to Christ. I want to rejoice with you, but don't stop there. Keep growing in your walk with God. And for those of us that are already following Jesus, my prayer is that we will grow in the God that says he is the God of transformation. God bless you, and may the Lord allow his face to shine upon you. Amen.